now this ne this next section is kind of the the central um ethos and thesis of what you represent and i think that um it's also what I represent now you mean yeah yeah <laughs> and me and me too. i mean this is a huge pillar of what i'm passionate about and have interviewed hundreds of people about this exact topic and so this topic is basically the idea that we are now able to take a constant stream of our biometrics and we are able to tweak where there is a imbalance in a sense, Dr. Aubrey de Grey uses the analogy, and you're going to give us some as well, of the fact that, like, why does a jet engine on an airplane have hundreds of sensors? But why do we see the doctor one time a year? Right? Yeah. So the, yeah. these types of things. And so, yeah. and, so, and so the future, and you're going to hit this back right now, is just that the fu th this is the future, is this constant stream, and then the ability to correct imbalances, and then for us to live healthier, moment to moment, healthier, stronger, uh, more creative, and also longer. And so that's this general idea, and we're going to get into a bunch of the subtopics on this, but yes, go ahead and... Um, and hit hit it hit it off no you, you you said you know you had all the the adjectives you can live healthier and moment by moment etc mm -hmm. i i just aim for one i just want to live equanimously yeah with equanimity right yes, yes um uh which is the highest form of love and the highest form yeah. of love is peace and yes. the highest form of peace is equanimity so um um you 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 actually already uh, hit on it when you know the jets have so many sensors and we used to think that the body didn't have uh as as much of molecules that can be sensed right and uh when you go to an illness medicine doctor essentially you already have a flat tire right your your heart has already given out right or you already have an overheated engine you already have a fever from an infection right so as an illness medicine doctor myself i'm a trained interventional neuroradiologist right um we know how to repair stuff we we you bring your car to the you know to the garage and we know how to do retrospectively oh this is actually it's not your carburetor you know it's this you know and so our diagnostics are are um, basically retrospective, right? So we know how to do repair, right? And we do repair, uh, our antibiotics have to work on populations. So we're de dealing with populations all the time, right? Of, of, uh, of uh, individuals. Because, hey, you know, the technique for open heart surgery has to work consistently throughout the world, right? If you, if you do it. So, but when you go, and 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 do that you're just looking at repairing your system right and then the concept of in illness medicine of prevention is disease prevention so the, the the diabetic society will say this is how you prevent diabetes this is how and then the neurology society is this is how you prevent alzheimer's and this is how you prevent you know um uh, and so on and so forth so if someone who has hypertension and someone who has cognitive decline and someone who has cancer and someone who has diabetes you know they will follow three four different kinds of of prevention guidelines and yeah. what the hell is that you know yeah. um yeah so notice yeah. i used hell all right i, yeah. I, I usually <laughs> use another yeah, yeah. expletive but, <laughs> but are you really expecting patients to do that but it turns out that um you know it you know our, our cars are so much better now because every three thousand miles there comes a warning light that says okay yeah. time for you to bring your car to the garage and yeah. then when the temperature is rising it shows exactly you know yes. uh, what the temperature is and gives That's you a right. warning that you're about to hit critical level right mm -hmm. or when your tire pressure is going down it's it it's uh, uh gives you the level of your tire pressure and which tire right uh, yeah. Initially, we didn't have those kinds of diagnostics in medicine, right? So all we were taught in illness medicine was pathology, you know, what's the disease, you know, 
and how to repair it. Pharmacology, by yeah. drugs, or surgery. Yeah. Cut him up, or do a combination of both, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so now- But we uh, also didn't have the access in terms of the instrumentation to see at that level. But now in the last really uh, like 100 years, we got be, this instrumentation. Because of the development of science and technology, right? We are now able to take a look inside the cell in fact, uh, there's a reason why my medical school classmates hate me, right? Because you're being dragged right back into biochemistry inside a cell. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas before, you couldn't measure yeah, those yeah, yeah. metabolites or small molecules, right? Yeah. Now you could measure them. Before, you will, you will just say, oh, just take vitamin C and just take vitamin E. <laughs> now I actually resent that question being asked of me. It's like, why don't you fucking measure it and then take it if you need it? Right, yeah, because yeah. all of those can be measured now. Yes. It turns out that metabolomics, which is the omics that's in there, clinical yes. metabolomics, which is the use of it in the clinics, it's, um, it's already 40 years old, right? But it's only hitting the clinics right now. Wow. Right? Yeah. But when you are dealing with health, not disease, you must have some objective measure of what it is that's going out of balance. You know, it's a playbook from uh, illness medicine, you diagnose and treat disease, right? So in health, you detect and correct imbalances because there's no disease, right? And if, if there's a disease underlying that, you set the disease aside for the specialist and you balance the uh, imbalance of uh, hormones and nutrients and other metabolites that are in there, right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, if you place those values between the values of uh, when you were 21 and 30 years old, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Interesting. Then you're you are, at your, when yeah, you're at your peak homeostatic capacity. Your peak, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Except, for, except for values like uh, vitamin D, for example. Vitamin D is actually a hormone. I call it the hormone named vitamin D, right? Um, but so, so then do we have a cat? Those, those, go ahead, go ahead. Those are evolutionarily determined. Right. So there are evolutionary determined values that came before us. Right. And so there is this catalog in a sense yes, of, yes. of optimized, but then Alan's uh, 21 year old uh, catalog of, of, of biometrics for an optimized uh, um, equanimity and equilibrium and homeostatic capacity onward is different, is somewhat similar, but also different than Ted's. So, and yes, yeah. yes, but it falls within a range, right? It's usually yeah. higher. Your needs for certain things is usually higher, right? And right now, I've, I've seen, for example, um, uh, 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 21, 22 year olds with growth hormone levels of like uh, of that of a 70 year old. You know, you could see how how um, wow. uh, how uh, we've changed a lot. Wow. Um, People even, in the even north more, uh, versus south, also geographically, right? Or in the, by the equator, I mean, or versus on, uh, towards the poles. They and, have, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and also, um, you know, it's not only that the uh, use of plastics, for example the endocrine disruptor systems, right? They disturb your hormonal levels. Like for example, they did a, uh, I think it was like uh, 60,000 men in Europe, you know, between ages 21 to 30. And they found out already drops in testosterone levels, um, you know, which used not to be there. So what we use as a, as, as a range is not what you use for illness medicine, right? When, when, when clients or clients, because they're not sick, right or patients come back and yeah. say oh look my thyroid hormone is normal well that's just enough not to make you sick right yeah so yeah. it's like uh, in when you say in nutrition the rda or the recommended dietary allowance yeah. is just enough not for you to incur the deficiency but it's not the optimal value for you Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So let's, let's visualize this as well. You have a, you have a really good visual that I'll um, embed here, but you have this, you have this general idea of scale that um, we can envision here where you have an idea of what's happening at this quantum biophysics level. And then you have what's happening at the atomic level, at the molecular level, the macromolecular level, organelle level, cell le le level, tissue organ, organ systems, and organism. So you have that, yeah. that increase. Yes, yes, and, yes. Then, and then what you have is you have, um, at, at, it's, it's really, it's at this intracellular 
level is the focus mm. right now. And right. at this intracellular level, there are three categories pretty much. There's optimal, suboptimal, and illness. And, and, and right. you, what we're talking about is basically keeping your biometrics at the optimal level. So even when they start going into what are called like these preliminary phases of suboptimal levels, um, that we can have those interventions to return them to optimal levels. And these can be measured via... Right. Let, go, yeah. right. It's just yeah. like, you know, your windshield wiper um, uh, fluid is low. Top it off. That may be what? You have low levels of alpha lipoic acid. You have low levels of vitamin B1, B2 or something. And those are like the newer uh, dashboards now that you have. Now it's available to us. Unfortunately, it cannot, you know, those are the fundamental functions of cells. So we're made of organs and underneath the organs are the specialized cells, like you know, your, your beta cells in your, in your pancreas, for example, that produce insulin. But underneath all of these organs and all of these specialized cells, there's a fundamental cell that has to run. It has a nucleus, it has a mitochondria, it has a cytoplasm, you know, it has a plasma reticula, you know, um, uh, you know it, and, and it has cell membranes. And it has a cytoplasm, yes. and no one's taking care of that, and that's fundamental, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, so health optimization is basically focused on health maintenance, right? It's maintaining, like when you're looking at your dashboard in in your car and saying, oh, this is slow and that's slow, you know, oh, this is this is uh, overheating. Oh, I need to change oil now. Now we actually have the technology to do that, which is through metabolomics, right? And I chose metabolomics for two reasons. One, the tests for them are already mature, meaning we could prove to illness medicine people like, hey, look, you know, remember those Krebs cycle intermediates that you just used to memorize? Uh, here they are, here are the levels. And usually they call me back and they go, Achako, so what do I do with this? I said, ha. Ah. So anyway, because it's used for health, right? It's it's fundamental. So when you are doing health optimization, you don't do one organ at a time, right? You do the fundamental cell in all yes. the body. So yes, you gave this really good example is basically if you go and you um, target the specific like pancreatic cell that is starting to have a little bit closer towards suboptimal. Yeah. What you do is if you, and I, and I want to see if you make the correction, it basically does all of the downstream much better. Yes. Now, now will you but teach I make us? No claims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make no claims because illness medicine will, will, you know, shoot me for that. And that's the reason why functional medicine, you know, has a lot of fights with other illness medicine doctors, right? But for me, it's enough to move uh, the, the values of your vitamins, your, your, your macronutrient uh, 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 components, like your essential amino acids and, and so on, and your, your uh, micronutrients, your vitamins, minerals, you know, and cofactors, and your hormones. If you move them to, to the optimal levels, then you see yes. the effects. Without correct. any claims, right? The, yes, it, yes. The system, it's, the system yes. tends to correct itself. Yes, it's like, it's like in very simple terms, it's like, huh, I've been sitting for a long time, my back hurts. And then you go and you swim and then you come, and then right when you're out of the pool, you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. Yeah. So that's the intervention towards optimal at the organism um, higher level. Now, t Ted, yeah. I, wanna, I wanna ask you this. At, um, let's talk about this. How do we take a sample from my body to mm -hmm. gain the, the intracellular metabolomic knowledge of what sugars, what lipids, what nucleotides, um, yeah. et cetera, are, uh, are, are amino acids are, are there and what, um, and then where they're out of range. The idea is yeah. then some are out of range. And then how do you give an intervent? Like, how do you analyze that? Is that through mass, uh, spec, spec, spectrometry and then, um, from there, then how do you um, provide the intervention? So walk us through that whole cycle. Um, so um, what you do, they do is uh, they take uh, urine, blood. Uh, for me, I take stool samples because I have to take check your gut microbiota, right? They're a mm -hmm. separate organ. They're not considered a postnatal organ in the body, um, which, influence, which is a major influence on your immune system, right? Yes. Um, 
uh, and um, uh, so it's a blood, urine, and stool. Uh, okay. We send them out to a metabolomic lab. Okay. Um, so, so essentially, they have all of this, um, uh, uh, you know, the gold standard right now is what they call the LCMSMS or the liquid chromatography um, mass spectrometry, but so it's already fast, like they're quadruples and blah, blah, blah. Yes, the yes. newer, uh, you know, and right now it's a race to provide, uh, to, to, to get to the protocols with the least invasive sampling. Like, exactly. for example, yes. you now know the that, sensor um, on uh, the toilet so that yeah, yeah, you don't even have yeah, to send it yeah. in. It just, or, yeah. or, you know, Google's um, um, uh, contact lenses, right? Now you have the continuous monitoring uh, over here, but that's individual, right? Uh, that's uh, for, for individual use. If, if you're like weird like us who like to, you know, I, I puncture myself three times a week for my blood ketone levels and for my blood sugar, even if I'm not diabetic, right? It's, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, um, so after that, so the, the, the results come in and what's nice is that they've already done enough statistical analysis to give you you know, uh, what is the suggested um, uh, amount that should be given to oh, the client? It's already there. However, you need to adjust, right? You, you need to, to adjust things. Um, like, like, for example, um, uh, uh, for example, you, you see, like, for example, the, the, uh, the zinc level is very, very high, right, for the patient. So you, you, for the client, Right and interseason, and you ask, you know, have you been taking lots of of um, uh, zinc lozenges? And yeah, it's artificially elevated. Then you'll see the copper dropping. Right, so you could see that uh, the system knows, you know, th there are counterbalances to things. If you take too much zinc, your copper will drop. You know, that's just the way you know you you will get balanced by through evolution. Right, um, uh, and so so after that, then. The way, so you, you come to me, the, the reason why it's nice is because this lends itself, it, it lends itself to telemedicine, right? Or tele, telehealth practice. Yeah. Because you never have to see your client or you never have to see your patient because you cannot say, hello, how are you molecule? You know, I, you know, how are you feeling today? You can't do that. You have to look at the values, you know, of the molecules themselves. What are the levels? Like, yeah, like you cannot say, hello, B12, you know, uh, um, what's your status today you can't uh, but for for most clients uh, so essentially you you take a look and you uh, essentially do a protocol for them right which which ones are be, to be taken um, before meals as soon as they wake up before they before they take a meal while they're eating especially those who who have taken too many proton pump inhibitors like nexium and so on you know where you're giving them like a, a beta in uh, hydrochloride acid to acidify your stomachs, you know, and, and also, so there's a protocol that goes on and then so, things that you take after a meal, right? And then things that you take before bedtime. So because, you, you know, hormones follow a diurnal level, you know, there's a certain uh, uh, pattern to, to all of these things. Of course, yeah. if you take alpha lipoic acid before meals, your blood sugar will go down, right? And you will feel dizzy because it's a hypoglycemic agent. Uh, so you, you should, you know, that's why I, I started this whole Health of immunization medicine and practice in order to be able to, to teach this. The clinical practice is very simple. You measure the metabolites, right? And you know that they are in a network. If you touch one metabolite or you touch one hormone, the other hormone will, will uh, respond. That's why I don't like this. Oh, you should replace your testosterone without replacing all the other things that you need to replace, right? It's, it's a bad practice because they're all in a network. And as you know, my life is about networks. So, yeah. Um, and so you move the, you give them, I usually give them sup supplements for the first 90 days because even if they say, well, Dr. Ted, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna eat properly, I promise, and blah, blah, blah. And you ask them, okay, what foods are high in, in coenzyme Q10? And they don't know. Okay, what foods are high in uh, alpha lipoic acid? They don't know, right? So uh, for the first 90 days, just to catch up with the deficiencies, I, I, I tell them, look, you didn't get to these deficiencies overnight. This occurred over time. 
with your habits, with your lifestyle, and with everything else. This is what it's showing. Let's catch up as fast, fast as possible. So, you know, uh, uh, the improvement can come uh, anywhere with, within two weeks, like if you're doing hormone therapy or, you know, uh, three to nine months if you're doing yeah. uh, nutrient, nutrient therapy. And you, you, you're a measure whether or not you're actually addressing all the things. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, because you, you, know, you, you, you gain... You know, you gain it even after two because you're you're taking again because there's so many sensors right on this jet yeah, now yeah, that yeah. we're getting the frequent readouts of improvements yes. 